Good morning, friends. I hope that your week is going well. We're uh, having a great week with the kids back in school. They had a good first day, although I'm sure they would much prefer to stay home. But uh, they were thrilled as well to see their friends and get into their classes. I hope that you're all, uh, if you've got kids in school, that they're doing well. If you've got kids prepping to go to college or in college, um, we're praying for them. And I know that they're, uh, well, I know that God's with them. Um, I know it's difficult. It's a difficult season for all of that. Today we have a psalm that's just a great psalm to read. Um, it's part of the, the kind of the ending of the uh, Psalter. It's eight psalms of David that finish uh, David's work in the Psalter, which is uh, quite a huge amount of work, if you haven't noticed all the psalms that we've been reading that are psalms of David. So uh, this one in particular is just a psalm that roots us in David's love for God and in David's confidence in God's love. And it's neat because David reflects on God's covenant, he reflects on God's presence with him, and he reflects on God's character and what it is that God focuses on. So as we come to this psalm, there's a lot that we can learn from it and a lot that we can rest in as we work through it together. So let's take a minute to read Psalm 138. I invite you to read it with me, uh, is if you want, or you can just listen. Psalm 138 of David. I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple, and I will praise your name for your love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted above all things your name and your word. When I called, you answered me. You made me bold and stout-hearted. May all the kings of the earth praise you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth. May they sing of the ways of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord is great. Though the Lord is on high, he looks upon the lowly, but the proud he knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes. With your right hand you save me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the work of your hands. So um, that's the beauty of this psalm. And the beauty of this psalm is the, just the beauty of David being loved by God and trusting God. So he begins by just rooting himself, as so many times before, by beginning with praise, declaring that that's why he's doing this, to give praise to God. And we've talked about how praise is different to when we give it to God than when we give it to somebody else. Um, God blesses us by giving us what we do not have. We bless God by acknowledging who he is. And that's what David does here. One of the neat things about this psalm is in verse 2, he says, I bow down towards your holy temple. Now, David died before the temple was built. So it's neat that these psalms have temple there. There's two things that could be happening there. Somebody could be writing in the word temple for whatever word David used. But I like to think that what's more likely, and I do think this is more likely, is that David was anticipating the coming temple. That this works, that in fact, the Psalter itself, as he wrote it, was in part designed to for worship in the temple. And so this psalm, as he writes it, he's thinking about what will come, how God will have a temple, allow a temple to be built in Jerusalem in his for his glory, and how that will... Uh, sit there for all the nations to come and to see the glory of God. And that's exactly where he goes. He says in verse 4, May all the kings of the earth praise you, O Lord. May they hear the words of your mouth when they sing of the ways of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord is great. And that's his goal is that the nations see the glory of God. And then you go back to verse 3, or verse 2, where it says, You have exalted above all things your name and your word. And I want you to notice that's what they're celebrating there, the kings of the earth. Though the Lord is on high, it goes on, he looks upon the lowly, and but the proud he knows from afar. And this is just so much repetition of this as well. It's just God's character that David's talking about here. God's character is such that the lowly, the humble, the meek, the poor, those who have been hurt and wounded and forgotten, God sees them. 
But those that are proud, that think that God, well, obviously should be paying attention to me. God sees them as well, but it's a very different scene, isn't it? There's something intimate about this language of looking upon versus seeing from afar. We know from afar. It's more like I know of you. I know of your deeds. I know of your wickedness. Um, and then David brings this into the first ten person where he says, Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes. With your right hand, you save me. Just this beautiful moment where David acknowledges his own story and God's place in it. How God has been a savior who's been right there with him. Not a God at a distance, not a shepherd on a hill, but he has been you with me. Um, and then finally, there's this declaration of hope that ends the psalm. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. So there's this declaration of hope, but then at the end, there's also just a reminder. So you can see, I guess in my mind, I, I see David here as an old man, maybe going through all the trouble that he had with his children and Absalom. And as he prays this prayer, he remembers God's faithfulness. He remembers God's character. And he realizes that it's only God who's going to see his dynasty continue. It's only God that's going to fulfill his covenant promise that there be a king of the Davidic line sitting on the throne forever. And so he turns and he says, don't abandon that work, Lord. Continue what I certainly can't do. And I think that's a good place for us to stop because the psalm stops there. But also because it's just a really good reminder to us that God's character is a character that brings glory to himself, that delights in revealing to the world who he is. His glory, his word, his power, his truth. Oh, sorry. Um, but then at the same time, we our role in it is to be declarers of those same things, enjoyers of those same things, praiser of those same things. But it's not something that we do second hand. It's not something that we do at a distance. It's something that comes from us being near unto God, from being dependent on him, from walking in his presence, from resting in his arms, from seeing him rescue us time after time. This is where our testimony comes from. When we see ourselves invested like David was in building the kingdom of God. And in that journey with God, we begin to get an idea of God's passions and his purpose and his love that endures forever for us and for the brokenhearted, for us and for the weary in the world. And finally, we can pray with the same confidence that David did. Do not abandon the works of your hands. Because that's the thing. If we're building God's kingdom, then we know that he's involved in building it. And he's the one who has every intention of seeing it through. But um, if we're building our own kingdom, then that kingdom's going to fall. If we're building uh, our own kingdom in our businesses, if we're building our own kingdoms in our families, if we're building our own kingdoms for our own glory or for our own sense of power in politics or in any context, that's not God's kingdom. And so the weight of that is um, sure to collapse in on itself. It's a house built on sand, so to speak. So friend, today as we close, um, there is a God who loves you. He loves you so much. He invites you to walk with him. He invites you to, to dwell with him. He calls you to bow before him and to praise him, declaring his glory and to know him, how beautiful he is. He invites you to walk with him on the journey to build his kingdom, to declare his glory and to bless the humble and the brokenhearted. I pray that today you rest in knowing his purposes and his power for you. And of course, we see all of this fulfilled, first and foremost, in Christ. So, let's pray. Lord, you sent your Son, who died on the cross, who went to his death to build your kingdom, to complete the work that you had begun in David. And completing that work, he rose from the dead and ascended to the throne of heaven where he reigns now. 
over us, over the living and the dead. And we praise you, Lord, as we rest in your arms. We praise you, Lord, as we work pursuing your kingdom. We praise you, Lord, as we see you and declare, as your word says, that you are true and you are mighty and you are holy and you are just and you are righteous. We praise you, Lord, before all of the strong and all of the powerful in the earth. And we declare that there is no one like you. Lord, we pray for your blessing as these students are in school this week. As everything starts back up, we pray particularly for Chandler as he moves into the next stages of his college education. And we pray the same for Thomas. Pray for Josh as he's working. <coughs> This school year, um, having finished his high school degree, 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 and we pray, Father, for those that are um, uh, fighting and battling for their lives against cancer and other things. May your strength and your peace be with them. May your strength and your peace be with those who care for them as well. As they look to you, may you sustain their hands and show them your love. Lord, we praise you that we have the privilege of gathering now to worship you together online. And Lord, we pray for your mercy on a world that is broken. And we pray for your peace and for your church that you would show us how we may walk humbly um, before you, calling you our forever king. Amen. Well, friends. I hope that you have an absolutely beautiful day. God bless you all. Bye-bye.